What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me right now on the J Makopa podcast. I'm so happy that you are here. I want you to know that the J Makopa podcast is the death to doubt. Okay, <laughs> it's the death to doubts, and that is what this is all about. Um, in this podcast, I just want everyone to believe again. This podcast is what you turn on when you need to believe in God. You need to just feel your belief in God, belief in yourself, belief in your dreams. So it's all about getting you to have faith and to believe. But this is also the place where your doubts come to die. This is the death to doubt so welcome so i want to welcome first and foremost the people who are always watching week in week out thank you so much that you guys are really supporting me i thank you from the bottom of my heart so you guys get an extra extra immersive but also i want to shout out to people who are here for the very first time i get messages every once in a while that people are watching this for the first time and they are blessed by it and i'm so happy that you found yourself uh, in a place where your doubts can die and you can believe again uh, the Jamo Copper podcast. So if it is your first time listening, I want to give you an extra immersive. But also, guys, what I do is if in the week I see anyone shouting out the podcast, I give you a personalized extra immersive. So this week uh, on Twitter, Mlindo gave me a shout out and homie, my boy, you are in Tembisa. So Tembisa, shout out. Oh, yes. Tembisa <laughs> Everybody in Tembisa shout out You're represented by Mlindo this week um, So Mlindo here comes your Extra immersive, My boy thank you oh, so much yes. I hope the podcast is going to continue Being a blessing in your life Now um, we're going to get into this message I don't have too much more to say Just that on the 16th of June Is my birthday Okay <laughs> So guys, whatever you're preparing for me, I'm excited. If you guys are going to sing songs for me, send me videos, whatever, whatever you guys have prepared for the 16th of June because it's Youth Day and because it's on Youth Day, do not ask me how old I am. You need to ask me how young I am, guys, because black, it doesn't crack, apparently. So, um, but yeah, it's my birthday. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to celebrate life, celebrate good things. Uh, in lockdown so i might need to buy myself an apple so trying to be healthy (laughs) or whatever it's gonna be so um but guys we're gonna get into the word today it's gonna be amazing it's incredible i'm feeling so good i'm feeling pumped up i just came back from a run in the morning and we're gonna get into this word i'm ready to give it to you my mind is set i hope you are set too let's say a prayer then we're gonna get into this let us pray so we come before you i thank you so much for your love i thank you so much for your mercy i pray god for everyone who's listening i pray god that you would use this word to minister to them i pray also that you would use me as a sharp tool to deliver this message to everyone who will be listening Uh, wherever they're going to be listening my god whether it's youtube whether it's instagram live whether it's on apple uh, podcast google podcast or spotify wherever it is that they're listening i pray that this would bless them in the mighty name of jesus i pray and i say amen amen so guys today the message in our session that we're going to be discussing is the fact that you have a choice to make when it comes to god in your walk with God today, you have a choice. It's either you are going to okay or you're going to obey. You know what I'm realizing is many times when it comes to what God uh, says we should do and God's word and what he expects from us, often we don't completely say, no, we don't want to do it. Often as God's people and often as someone who trusts in God and you want to follow God, when God says something that makes you uncomfortable, when God asks you or commands you to do something that you don't like, often we don't say no, we say okay. they are like, okay, God, okay, okay. In church, maybe it's not okay, but it is amen. You know, God would say that you must live a certain life, do a certain thing, step into certain responsibilities. And what you will find yourself saying is, okay, 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 God, amen. Amen, that's a good word. Okay, God, okay. But just because you said okay, it doesn't mean you're going to obey. And we can find ourselves in a place that our, obedi- our disobedience is being hidden by our amens. Our disobedience is being hidden by our okays. You see, we don't outrightly reject and say we will not do it, but sometimes it is a hidden thing that we do, just a sort of an agreement that is from our words, but it doesn't match our hearts. Now, you have a choice. You can either stay in that okay or you can obey. In the book of Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, it says, I went in response to a revelation and meeting privately with those esteemed as leaders. I presented my... I presented them the gospel that I preach among the Gentiles. I wanted to be sure that I was not running and had not been running my race in vain. Paul says this. He says, I went in response to a revelation. He went in response to what God said. Now, how do you respond to God's word? Do you respond to God's word like you're in church and just say amen? Or in another way, uh, according to this message I'm giving you, do you respond to it just by saying, okay, okay, God. Or do you obey? You see, what Paul did, he didn't just hear the word. He responded to it. He obeyed it. He, it, it moved him. Does, God, does God's word move you? When God's word is spoken to you, or when you read his word, does it move you to action? Or do you just stay passive and say amen? Do you stay passive and type amen on your phone? Do you stay passive and just say amen, it's good, okay God, or do you obey him? Today we want to tackle the areas of disobedience in our hearts. But not just disobedience because we're being rebellious. Sometimes the disobedience, it, it manifests in our lives because we are stuck in things in the past. We are stuck in things in the past. We are stuck in a moment in the past that makes it difficult for us to go forward. So I know that maybe the reason you struggle to obey is because of past experiences. I, I remember a time, some of you will know this, there was a time when my father was in a crazy accident, a head-on collision. I remember I was in grade one or two and uh, grade two or three actually or four and we were in uh, primary school and we were singing Kumbaya, Kumbaya. Kumbaya. <laughs> um, and, and there's a, po a point where we were singing, someone is praying, my Lord, Kumbaya. I remember I was just a little kid there and I remember praying at that moment. All the kids were singing and I remember this like it was yesterday. And I was just like singing with them. And then when they said someone's praying, my Lord, Kumbaya, I was just like praying and I was like, please God, please God, please God, please God, don't let my dad die. My dad was in ICU at the moment um, and I was like, don't let him die, don't let him die, don't let him die. And I remember one of my friends pointed at me and he's like, he's actually praying, he's actually praying. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm not praying, I'm not praying. Um, but I was stuck in a moment, I was stuck in a moment of pain. And many people, whether you admit it or not, in different places in your life, you can be stuck in a moment. And when you are stuck in a moment of pain, uh, stuck in a moment of disbelief, stuck in a moment of, of confusion, it can make it hard for God for God's word to, to move you. It can make it hard for even you to begin to obey God as you should. So what happens when you're stuck in a moment? You have a decision to make. You can be stuck in that place and just say, okay, God, I hear what you're saying. Or you can say, God, I hear what you're saying and I'm going to start obeying. So you have a choice. You can okay or you can obey. You can okay God or you can obey God. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 17. We're going to read verse 11 to 19. It says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had lepr leprosy met him they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice jesus master have pity on us when he saw them he said go show yourselves to the priests and as they went and as they went they were cleansed one of them when he saw that he was healed came back praising god in a loud voice he threw himself at jesus's feet and thanked him and he was a samaritan jesus asked were not all 10 men cleansed where are the other nine has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, go and rise or rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The Bible says that as they went, they were, they were healed. As they obeyed God, they were healed. You see, there is an as they went season that each of us are going to be called to. You see, that's the moment when you have prayed for God, or I should say that's the season or that's the journey. You've prayed to God for something. You've said, God, I need this. God, have mercy on me. God, help me out in this way. God, give me strength for this. And then you are called to go on a journey of obedience before you get the answer. Now, the as they went season can be a very confusing time because you will know that you will pray to God and you'll say, God, I need you to come through for me in this way. But 
you will find yourself waiting for God to come through. Just because you've said a prayer, it doesn't mean that God is going to come through right at that moment. But these people who had leprosy said, you know what? We're going to obey God. If God has said something, we are going to do it. Now, way before social distancing, let me tell you about leprosy. Way before quarantining, coronavirus, and all the things that we are doing right now, there was leprosy. Now, leprosy in those days was a, a cure that people could not cleanse. And if you had leprosy, um, you were cast out of society because you were seen as unclean. And also, you was, it was seen as, you know, if you touch anyone who has leprosy, you're going to get leprosy too, and you're going to be unclean. And if someone touched you and you got leprosy, your whole family would excommunicate you. They would say, get out and go live outside of the town. What would actually happen with people with leprosy is they would wear a, a, a little bell around their neck or they would carry a bell around them. And when they would come into town, they would ring these bells and they would shout out, unclean so that everybody would distance themselves from the people who had leprosy now understand this people who had leprosy were cast away they were seen as dirty they were seen as people who nobody should be speaking to another thing about leprosy is leprosy was a disease that over time things would fall off like fingers would fall off ears would fall off you know man things were falling you know you understand me like Ears, noses, lips, tongues. Okay, not that, that bad. <laughs> not that bad, but it was a disease that um, some of your limbs would fall off because of the sickness. And I think about that sickness, and I think many times it's the same thing in our spiritual lives and the same thing in our emotional lives, that if you find yourself stuck and if you allow... Uh, things to infect you, if you allow pain to infect you, if you allow your doubts to infect you, if you allow offense, anger, if you allow pain, if you allow even just complacency, being lazy in your walk with God, if you allow those things to infect you, things are going to fall off. Your prayer life is going to start falling off. Your purity is going to start falling off. Your, your commitment to God is going to start falling off. Your faith, come on, it's all going to start falling off if you allow the wrong in this world to begin to infect you. Now, these people were infected by a sickness, but you can be infected by some things. You can be infected by um, listening to too much music that is changing your mindset on the world. You can be infected by having a wrong friend group. You can be infected and consumed by things you are watching, listening to, places that you are going. And you need to be careful for that. Are things falling off in your life? Are th is, is your prayer life falling off? Is your commitment to God falling off? Is your purity falling off? I ask you today, what could be falling off because you are allowing certain things to consume you now a thing about these men i want you to understand is again they were cast away they were seen as dirty they were seen as not a part of the group but what did they do when they saw jesus they cried out to god these are people who nobody must speak to rightfully speaking even Jesus should not be seen around them, should not be speaking to them. That's why in the passage it says, from a distance they cried out. From a distance they said, we know we're not allowed to be in the presence of God. We know that we are not clean people. We know that we are, are people who are filthy. But from a distance we're going to cry out to God. From a distance. You know, I, I think about this and what it, it encourages me about is that even if we are sinners, even if you are you have made mistakes, even if you feel like you don't believe you, you don't belong to the people of God, even if you feel like your belief has been dying, God still says you must cry out to him. God still says you must lift up your voice to him. And it doesn't matter how far, it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter how dark you think your past is, if you lift up your voice to God, he will hear you. Come on, some of you could be feeling like you are condemned because of things things you've done. You may feel a, a sense of guilt because of things that have happened. You may feel like, hey, you're not the person who, who God wants to hear from at this moment. I want to encourage you, lift your voice to God because he will hear you and he will never cast you out. As we see with these lepers, they lifted up their voice and they said, God, have mercy on us. And God heard them. I, I wonder how many lepers maybe saw Jesus because Jesus, those were not the only people with leprosy who Jesus would walk by i'm sure there were some people who had leprosy who saw jesus and they just said yeah 
People like us aren't supposed to be aren't supposed to be around the clean ones. People like us are not supposed to be around Jesus. So we're gonna push ourselves away. And that's what guilt will do to you. Guilt will tell you that you should not be close to Jesus. Guilt will tell you that you should not be finding yourself in church. Guilt, guilt will tell you that you God doesn't want to hear your prayers. But that is a lie from the devil. I want you to know that God still calls you to speak out to him, to let him know what's going on because he cares for you as he cared for these lepers it doesn't matter how far how dark how far you may feel you are or how lost you may feel god still says lift your voice to him i hope that this is encouraging you today jesus said to them jesus said to them go show yourself to the priests go show yourself to the priests when they came they said Jesus, have mercy on us. What Jesus says is, go show yourself to the priest. Now, what you must understand in those days, that was something that lepers heard all the time. People with leprosy heard that all the time. Go show yourself to the priest. Not even um, only from righteous people, but everyone would tell them, hey, go show yourself to the priest. Because what? The priests in those days would sometimes give them clothes or, or give them some food or sometimes... Uh, some priests would even be trained in some medical things. So uh, people with leprosy would sometimes go to the priests and the priests would see how they can help the people with leprosy. So now think about this. The lepers could have been saying, hey, this is Jesus. I'm sure he's going to tell us this great message. I'm sure Jesus is going to say this wonderful new thing. But what does Jesus say to them? Jesus says what they've always been hearing. Jesus doesn't come to them with something new. Jesus doesn't come to them with a new message. Jesus doesn't come to them with a new revelation. Jesus says to them what they have already been doing. They had been going to the priests. They had been doing that since they were young or since they got sick. They've been doing that. Now imagine how that could have made some one of them feel. Or how that could have made you feel when you are expecting something different from, from God. Instead, he gives you what you have heard all along. He gives you something that you have heard all along. And some of them could have struggled a little bit at that moment because they said, but we've been doing this thing. We've been following um, those steps. Wasn't he supposed to speak a word and we were supposed to be healed? Well, isn't God supposed to just come through and, and, and do a new thing? Isn't he God? Isn't he Jesus? Shouldn't he be the one who's supposed to change the situation? But instead he is telling me to keep doing what I've always been doing. And you know, you can find yourself in that same place where, hey, God is saying, do the same thing you've been doing. God is telling you to keep doing and living the same life you've been living and be faithful with the thing that's in your hand and stay focused with the little thing that's in your hand. But maybe you were expecting God to say a completely different thing. You see, you have to be careful that you, that, that you don't view um, God's word and you don't view your future with the lens of the past. Because just because you have been doing certain things the same way, it doesn't always mean, it does not always mean that the outcome is always, always going to be the same. Because sometimes you can be doing the same thing, but it is leading up to something great. Can someone say amen? You, God, God can be telling you to stay faithful on a journey, stay faithful on a journey. Just keep doing what you've always been doing. Just keep faithfully doing what he said you must do all along. And that is what's going to lead you to the breakthrough. But sometimes people can, uh, you, know, you know, what I find is many times you can find yourself and I can find myself saying, God, but I thought you were going to say something new. Um, and then what happens is we don't take God's word seriously because we've heard it before. Because we grew up hearing about the crippled man. Yeah, we've heard that before. When someone tells you about the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah, I've heard that before. When people tell you that uh, Jesus has uh, healed blind eyes. You say, yeah, that, that, uh, we've heard that. Those, those are old stories. You see, a thing that you must be careful that you don't do is get comfortable or familiar with the word of God. Don't get familiar with the word of God. You see, Jesus told them something that they have always been hearing. And sometimes the message that's going to come to you is not going to be a new message. 
When, when God wants to bring a breakthrough in your life or when God wants to build you up and you're in a, a time of, of struggle or a time of challenge and you're expecting a new word, sometimes what God is going to give you is the word that you've always been hearing. You've been hearing this all along and now you're like, I wanted something new. But God is saying, no, it's about what I have said to you before. You see, I don't know about you, but for me, I love, I love um, new music. New music, whenever I hear one of my artists that I like um, has released a new album, I love it. There was an album that I heard um, a couple months ago and the first time I heard it, now I listened to it. Yo, I was like, this guy, he outdid himself. I was like listening to it. I remember it was at night. I was like, oh, this guy outdid himself. This album is killer. This album is so dope. It's fresh. I remember listening to it the first time. Yeah? And literally, I said, let me listen to it again. Guys, do you know the second time I listened to it, the same night, it didn't sound the same. <laughs> there were some songs that they hyped me up so much the first time I heard them. The second time I heard it, I was like, uh, yeah. And you know what I told myself? I said, yo, this guy doesn't make uh, classic music. His music doesn't last, doesn't last long. It's, it's just those music that you hear the first time and it's nice and then it's not nice anymore. But at the moment, you know, God, as I was uh, uh, reflecting on that and as I was re preparing this message, you know, God highlighted to me the fact that the music didn't change. It's not the music that changed. This, the same energy I heard the first time in the music, it's still there. The same uh, artistry in the music, it's still there. It's not the music that changed. It's not the music that became dull. It is my ears. That became dull. Come on. If you guys are hearing me, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's not God's word that loses effectiveness. It's not God's word that loses power. It's not God's word that loses freshness. It is your ears that have become dull. It is your ears that have become dull because you have maybe heard God's word countless times and you say, no, but I've heard that before. No, it is still the same word that has power. But the issue you now is your ears have become dull and what you need to work on is saying God give me fresh ears refresh my ears refresh my hearing refresh my mind refresh me so I can approach your word and see its freshness come on this is something you need to protect yourself from never get familiar with God's word and say you need something new God's word never gets old God's word is not like some food that expires it has no expiry date God's word is a spiritual food that is non-perishable this is something that is going to feed you from age to age it does not get old the problem can be that your ears have become dull the problem can be that your taste buds your spiritual taste buds have become dull and you need to say God give me a fresh set of ears give me a fresh taste buds because your word is still true you see, he, these lepers never said, now nah, we've heard that before. You see, we can learn from the lepers because they never said we heard that before, even though they have heard that before. And even though they came to Jesus, the one who they expected something big from, Jesus gave them what they've always heard before. They said, we are going to obey you, God. We're going to obey you. I know we've heard this before. I know we've heard those verses before. I know you've heard those, this message before. I know you've been to church and they've sang that song before. I know that you've heard that, that passage preached from before. I know maybe the pastor on the Sunday has repeated that sermon, but your ears are fresh and you are ready to obey and not just say, okay. You're not going to just say, okay, if, if you want the, the fullness of what God is going to allow you to step into and for God to set you free from repetitive sin and God to set you free from repetitive anger or, or, or things that are haunting you, then just obey. Don't just say, okay, don't just say the amens, but obey him and be like the lepers who said, we will obey you, God. We are going to do what you're telling us to do. You see, what has happened in our society and in, in our culture is cell phones have drastically changed humankind, have drastically changed humankind, where they have made us so used to getting things um, instant. We're so used to getting things instant instantly like um, a big thing with with cell phones is cameras right now especially social media it's all about videos it's all about pictures and a thing that you will know is um, if somebody were to take pictures of you they take maybe they say okay stand there let me take pictures of you pa, 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 pa. you do all the poses you know the ladies will be doing the 
the pouts, if pouting is still in, or they will be, you know, making their body however it's going to be, the gents, you know what I'm saying, making, making, adding the sauce there. So, um, but as soon as the pictures are taken, what do you do? You want to see the picture. Because your mind has been trained that if I press a button, I see the result. If I press the button, I see the result. Press the button, see the result. Press the button, see the result. We're so used to pressing a button and seeing a result. We're so used to taking a picture and seeing the result. And that is why, just um, as a side note, many times people are so impatient. People are so impatient. We are living in a time that our relationship with time is so unhealthy. Our relationship with humans, young people, um, people in their 30s, people in their teens, no matter where you are at life right now, you're, it's most likely your relationship with time is, there's a problem with it. Because we are in a place where, where we can't wait. People will start a YouTube channel and because it doesn't start growing asap all of a sudden people they lose passion about it people will start a business and if in two years the business is not doing what you want it to do people already they start losing their focus people will want to start um whatever they want to start start a, a, um, a music career start a a uh, a relationship and if it's not moving soon people already begin to say you know what it's not working and i want us to understand that's not how life works you need to grow in your patience you need to grow because yes technology is trying to make things go fast but life is a marathon it's not a sprint now imagine if these um lepers the people who had leprosy who who jesus spoke to if they wanted instant healing they could have just said okay heal us are you not going to heal us and they could have said you know what we give up. We quit. We're going to do our own thing because this guy didn't heal us. But instead, they said, we're going to go on the journey. Again, there is the as they went season that you're going to walk in. The as you go season where you've said the prayer. And then there is going to be a journey that you must go on before you get the answer. Jesus spoke to them. You see, in this moment, Jesus spoke to them. And, and they had a choice where they could have said, we want the instant um, result or we're willing to go on the journey. So you have to be willing to go on the journey. And you know what the journey is? The journey is obedience. Like I said, the, the title of this message is you can either say, okay. They could have said, when Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest, they could have said, okay, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. You, you, you're telling us what we've already heard. Okay. Okay. Amen. Ne? Okay, Jesus. Amen. Ne? Amen. Nice message, okay. We're going to do our own thing right now. Amen. Yeah, we know we, we'll go to the priest when we feel like it. When, when we have time, we'll go to the priest. But instead, they said, we're going to go to the priest right now because Jesus said it. And you know what that as you go season is? When God speaks to you, you see, the as you go season is a, is a journey of obedience. You see, they said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus then gives them a command. Jesus then gives them his word. You see, when you come to God with a request, what God does is he says, go to his word and live that out. He, God does not say, live out my word when it suits you. Because God gives them a, resp a responsibility before he gives them the answer of their prayer. God gives them responsibility because before he gives them breakthrough. You must understand when you want an answered prayer, God is not going to give you the answered prayer. He's going to give you responsibility. God is going to give you something you must be faithful with. God is going to give you something that you must be consistent with before you get the answer of your prayer. Because I want you to know that maybe the the, the lepers could have been saying that maybe the, the priests are going to give us something. Maybe Jesus knows something about the priests. Maybe there's something prepared by the priests. But the power of God's word was not at the end of the journey, but the power that was seen in their lives and the miracle that happened in their lives was on the journey of obedience. And I want you to understand that when you come to God with the request, when you come to God and say you want him to come through for you or to answer a prayer, the miracle and the breakthrough that's going to happen, the great change in your life is going to happen on the journey of obedience. The journey of obedience. It's not even in the answered prayer. You, will, you are going to go to God. You're going to tell testimonies 
of what happened as you were waiting and what God spoke to you, how God built you up, how God refreshed you in your season of as you go. Jesus held, healed them. Jesus healed them as they were obeying. Come on. You see, this is not just a, a highlight of the power of Jesus. This is not just a, a story that is highlighting the power of God, but this is highlighting the word of God. I want you to get that. This is not just highlighting the power. It's, it's not just saying, hey, there was a miracle. This is highlighting what God says and what happens when we obey what God says. Again, I want you to understand God will call you to obey him, not when the time is right. Not when the time is right. You see, people are always saying, I'm waiting for when the time is right. That's when I'm going to I'm going to pray when the time is right. I'm going to seek God when the time is right. I'm going to you know, I'm going to live my life for God when the time is right. That that's when I'm going to seek God, but God is not calling you to seek him when the time is right. God is calling you to seek him at the right time. And the right time is right now. The right time is when he speaks. The right time is when you hear his word. That is when he says go. God never changed the situation for these guys. You get me? God didn't change the situation for them. They were still in the same situation. And God didn't say, okay, let me bring some healing. Let me try cover you up a little bit. He says, no, obey me. Go and show yourselves to the priest. You see, God is not going to change the situation from you, for, from you or from your family or what's happening in the finances or what's happening in your emotions. Don't expect the change to happen. Don't expect for things to begin to feel better. Don't expect for things to, to begin to fall into place. What you need to do is have conviction of obedience regardless regardless of what's going on, regardless of how you're feeling, regardless of what you're seeing around you, regardless of the challenge around you, you need to be in a place where you say, hey, I am going to obey. I'm not just going to say, okay, God. I'm not just going to say, amen, God. I'm going to obey God. The power is in the process. The power is in the journey. The power is in the obedience. You have an opportunity to, to, to obey God and to see the fruit of obedience and to see the blessing of obedience. Or you can just say, okay, and stay where you've always been and stay in the comfort zone. You know, another thing I want to say just in, in my mind that I'm thinking about um, is you should not be proud of having a friend group that keeps you in your comfort zone. You, you should actually be very aware if, if you have friends, if you have even family, I'm talking about even parents, even brothers and sisters who are keeping you in your comfort zone, do not be okay with that. You need to find people who are going to encourage you to believe. And this is why this podcast is there. To believe for bigger, to believe for greater. And again, as we heard last year, to sometimes even believe for less. To, to, to have a belief that's going to even say that I'm willing to go in a season where I will have less in order that God's glory would be more. Because sometimes believing for more is going to call you out of your comfort zone. But sometimes believing for less is going to call you out of your comfort zone. But regardless, step out of that comfort zone. Step out of the comfort zone and step into obedience regardless of what God is calling you to. Step out of comfort because comfort is going to keep you in a place where things will fall off and it's not going to help you grow. Can someone say amen wherever you were at? You have to walk in obedience, obedience, obedience. You have a, and this is what I'm calling you to. Don't just say okay to God. Obey God. All right, let me fix this up. <laughs> Don't just say okay to God. Don't just say okay, God. Okay. Don't just say amen, but obey God. You see, guys, I'm... There are two kinds of people in this world. They are cat people and they are dog people. And if you are a cat person, if you like cats, I'm going to ask you right now, um, at the end of the podcast, to send me a DM so I can rebuke that spirit out of you in the name of Jesus. So, so that darkness that's on the inside of you must, re must, must release you in the name. I'm, 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 I'm willing to stand with you in faith that that love for cats will leave you. Okay? <laughs> The cat people, if you love cats, send me a DM. I'll stand with you in prayer. We're going to fast.
together. But then there are the dog people, the anointed ones, the people who love dogs, the people who appreciate man's best friend, ha, the anointed ones. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, oh, the people, I, I, I can feel someone here who loves, who loves dogs. I see you, I see you. I can see you. Touch your screen right now. <laughs> but there's two people who love cats and dogs. And guys, I love dogs. I'm a dog person. I'm a dog person. Dogs are loyal. Dogs love people. You know, when you come home, to a dog if you have a pet a pet that's a dog and you come home the dog is waiting for you the dog it waves its tail and it's barking and says you're here <laughs> thank you for coming home i've been missing you that's how dogs respond to you but cats when you come home you don't know where your cat is you come home where is your cat all you know is the bowl of milk is empty like the milk is gone and when the milk is gone your cat's also gone you know what I'm saying? The cat only comes at a certain time when it knows that the milk is back. When you've poured milk, it comes back, drinks the milk, it's gone again. Where's your cat? If you have a cat right now, I bet you don't know where your cat is. I prophesy that. <laughs> I prophesy you don't know where your cat is, right? I'm sure it's on the streets. Cats belong to the streets. And I don't like it. You know, if, if dogs ne, could talk, when you, when you rub a dog, you know, if it could speak, it, it would be telling you, oh, you're my master. And, and wherever you, you, you rub the dog, it's, oh, I like it. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love you. You know, that's how dogs are. But if cats could speak, you know, you know uh, uh, like I'm saying, a dogs would be saying, you're my master. Thank you for rubbing me. Thank you for loving me. You know, that's how dogs are. But cats, you know, if a cat could speak and, and you're rubbing a cat, a cat would, would, would say, I own you. I own you. Even when you rub a cat, it says, eh, 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 this side, this side, this side. I, I, I can't, it, it even turns. It says, eh, eh, that side, that side. I, I don't like it. This, you, you know, a, a cat looks at you and says, I own you. I own you. You belong to me. I own you. I own you. <laughs> that's, how, that's how cats are, man. Um, so let's remove cats from this conversation because I'm getting disturbed. Um, but dogs, you know, um, dogs have an understanding that I have a master and I obey my master. They have a, an understanding about that. I remember just now I, as I was running, it just came to me as I'm closing this message. Um, as I'm closing this message, um, I was running and uh, you know, there's people who walk their dogs and some of their dogs are not dogs. Some people are walking bears out there. They are lions that they are walking. And it was a big dog and, and I was running and as, as, I was, as I was running, I was like, oh no. Oh no. And this dog is looking at me, you know, you know when a dog is looking at you and, and it's beginning to pull the, the, the leash of the, the person and, and I'm like, oh Lord, oh Lord, be with me. Oh Lord, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Oh God, I, I, oh, help me to not fear. <laughs> as, I'm, as I was walking and, and, and running. But what happened was the, the owner of the dog spoke a word, spoke a word and the dog obeyed. It said stop it said stop it said stop and the dog stopped you know i think we often need to adopt that same type of mentality where we understand that we have a master and when our master speaks we need to obey when our lord speaks we must obey i want you to know that obedience is more than a feeling it's not just about when you feel good it's not about do you feel like going to church it's not about do you feel like praying it's not about do you feel like obeying obedience must be greater than your feelings can someone say amen these men it was as they went as they obeyed god that is when the miracle happened and i want you to know that it's going to be as you obey that your miracle is going to come out as you obey that's when the breakthrough will come as you obey that's when the change will happen as you obey don't wait for things to change the people with leprosy didn't say we're waiting for our healing to come before we obey you god they said god if you're saying this we will obey i want to ask you today what could it be that god is calling you to do some of us man you're in a relationship that's not godly you need to get out of the relationship some of you it is you are not praying you need to start praying some some of you it's you're not reading god's word you need to start doing that some some of you it's just you are compromising you are taking in things that you know you're not supposed to be doing some of you you are in a wrong it wrong friend groups you know what it is that god wants you to do but you're not doing it and you're praying and you're saying god please answer this 
this prayer request. Answer this thing in my life. Help me in these ways. But God will often listen to me. What God is going to do is when you come to him with a request, what he is going to do is give you a command. You're going to come with a request and God's going to give you a command. That command is going to be the gateway to your breakthrough. Listen to me. The command is the gateway to your breakthrough because the path to your answered prayer is obedience. I want to say that again. The path to your answered prayer is obedience. Now I want to say a prayer for each one of us that we're going to say, God, help us to obey. Help us to not just say okay. Because again, I want you to say, I want you to remember that sometimes when we disobey God, it's not that we say no. We don't say, I disagree. We often say amen. Yep. You often will say amen, even though you you are not going to obey. You will often say amen, God. You'll often be in church and say, amen, yes, yes, we should be doing those things. But you leave church and you don't do it. Even sometimes, maybe even after a podcast, you can say amen, but the week comes on. And when it's time for you to apply obedience, you said amen while, while you were listening to the podcast, but you didn't obey it in the week. You didn't obey God's word in the week. Now, what I know is that the Holy Spirit is in each believer and the Holy Spirit will speak to you about what you are supposed to be doing. And as we're praying right now, I want you to be saying, God, um, convict me of where I need to obey you more. In my prayer life, in my reading God's word, in my forgiveness of others, in, in you not being jealous, in you not comparing yourself to others, in you treating your parents right, in you treating your siblings right, whatever it could be, obedience um, needs to be our lifestyle. And obedience, that is the path to our answered prayer. So let's pray to, together and let's uh, ask God to give us grace to obey. Let's, let's pray. Father, we come before you. I thank you so much for everyone who is listening. I pray, God, that you would do a wonderful work in each one of our hearts. God, sometimes we mask our disobedience. We cover it with amens. We cover disobedience with just saying okay. But God, we know today we have an option. We can either just okay you or we can obey you. And today, God, I ask you for grace for my life and for those who are listening, that we would be the people who obey you. May we learn from the lepers, God, that may we not wait for the, for, um, the time to be right. Uh, may we, my God, obey you at the right time and the right time is now. The right time is when we hear you and when we know what you want from us. That is the right time to obey. So God, I pray for different people, my God. Some people are facing uh, challenges. Some people are facing temptation. Some people are fearing, uh, facing worries and doubts. But God, today, we pray no matter what we are facing, may we choose to obey you. I pray, God, also, may we not become familiar with your word where the Bible, where sermons, where church, worship, prayer, all these things, these amazing things that are full of power, that they begin to be things that we don't take serious or things that we just sort of do religiously. I pray, God, may you give us a new set of ears or refresh our ears, refresh our eyes, refresh our spiritual taste buds, that, my God, the power and the life and the freshness of your presence and of what you give us may it always remain fresh uh, in our sight, my God. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would do this for us. May we obey you, God. May we not disobey you and cover it with okays and cover it with amens but may we obey you with all our hearts with all our minds in the name of jesus we pray and we all said amen amen so guys thank you so much that was the j makopo podcast um you have a choice you're either going to okay or you're gonna obey you're either gonna okay god or you're gonna obey god guys this is the j makopo podcast i encourage you to believe 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 in God, believe in yourself, believe that the best is yet to come. This podcast is the death to doubt. So this is the place you come when you doubt when you want your doubts to die. This is the place you come where if you have people around you who you know doubt is overcoming them and they need a place where they can reconnect. This is the place they go. This is the death to doubt. Guys, I want to encourage you to believe, believe, believe. Um, trust God through every situation. Thank you for tuning in. If you're tuning in on YouTube, if you're tuning in on Instagram Live, if you're tuning in 
on um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening to it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this. Uh, again, write reviews, write comments, whatever it's going to be. I appreciate you all. God bless you. Listen to this more than once uh, because when you listen to something twice, uh, it, usually you'll pick up other things you never heard the first time. And this particular uh, episode is a bit longer than usual. So sometimes you're more likely to miss certain things. So it's always a good thing that in the week, you know, pick it up, pull it up, listen to it again and be blessed. But otherwise, I hope you guys will be good. Uh, be good. Be safe. Cover up. Sanitize your hands and all those things. We're going to get through this whole uh, pandemic. We will be OK. Uh, but stay safe, guys. Uh, you are all loved. to all blessed so uh take care see you next sunday that was the jayma copper podcast god is love peace out